Hi, I'm Carly McAvoy. Today we're talking about least common multiple. When we say to find the least common multiple, we're asking you to find the first number that both numbers divide into evenly. Another way to say that is what is the smallest multiple that the two numbers have in common? So let's look at some examples. And the first method we're going to look at is just comparing multiples. So we write out the multiples of each number, and then we find the number that is on both lists, the first number that's on both lists. So if I'm asking what is the common multiple, least common multiple for 5 and 6, I would write out some multiples of 5 and 6. And you really don't have to go this far, but I just want you to remember what multiples are. 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, etc. And then I would do the same for 6. And then you can see that 5 and 6 have mul many things in common. They have a 60. They're bo they both have a 60 on their list. But when we're asking for least, we're saying the very first one or the smallest multiple that the two numbers have in common. So what is the first one that they have in common? Well, if we look here, the first time we see a number that's on both lists is right here. So we would say that the LCM for 5 and 6 is 30 because that's the first place that they, the first number they both have in common. Let's look at another one. What's the LCM for 8 and 12? So what I did first was I wrote out the multiples of 8, and then I wrote out the multiples of 12, and then I want to look to see what do they have in common. So um, I can see that they also have more than one thing in common on their list. I can see 48 is on their list, but that's just a common multiple, not the least common multiple. And I also want to bring your attention to the fact that I wrote the directions in two ways because you don't know exactly what you're going to see. They may say, what is the least common multiple? Or they could just say, find the LCM, LCM standing for least common multiple. So the first one that I see on the list that they have in common here is the 24s. So the LCM for 8 and 12 is 24. That's the first number that they have in common. And that method is just by comparing the multiples. And um, the reason that we might not like that sometimes is something like this. What about the LCM for 9 and 20? I wrote out the multiples of 9 and I wrote out the multiples of 20 for quite a ways. And as I look at that, I can see that there's no number that they have in common. Does that mean that there's no least common multiple? It does not mean that. But it does mean that you'd have to go pretty far to find it. And so um, you don't always have to write both multiples out. If you're going to just do one, you could just write the greatest multiple, the, the greatest number out. And so start counting by 20s until you see something that 9 goes into. So no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Doesn't 9 go into 120? I don't know, I can check it, right? So this method, you can see it gets a little difficult. It doesn't go, what about this, this? Well, here's one that goes, and that is 180. I know 9 goes into 180. So because I, you can always check using your calculator. You could have said, well, 120 divided by 9, 140 divided by 9, 160 divided by 9. Remember that shortcut where you can just add the digits up and see if 9 goes into it? So 2 plus 1 is 3. 9 doesn't go into 3, so 9 doesn't go into 120. But 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 goes into 9, so 9 goes into 180. You can use your rules of divisibility, but what I want you to see there is it's kind of a pain if the number gets pretty big to keep doing that. So then we look at the second method that we have, and that is the upside-down division method. And that method, you divide both numbers by a common factor and repeat until the common factor is 1, the only common factor, and then multiply everything in the L. So this is a very different kind of way, but I'm going to do this upside down division. That's why I'm calling it that. And I look for a common factor. And what goes into 18 and 45? And I know that 3 goes. And so then I can say, how many times does 3 go into 18? 6. So 6 times 3 is 18. How many times does 3 go into 45? Well, that goes 15. 15 times 3 is 45. Is there anything else these have in common? Yes, there is. 3 goes again, right? So 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 15 five times. 
and now I don't have anything in common except a 1, so I multiply everything in the L. So my LCM is 3 times 3 times 2 times 5, and that's 9 times 10 or 90. Okay, so I could have done that in a fewer steps if I would have recognized that 9 was the common factor instead of 3 and 3, but you can do multiple steps if you need to. What about 24 and 40? The first, and you might want to stop the video and try these. The least, the uh, I can see that 4 would go into both of these, so I'm going to do that. 4 goes into 24 6 times, and 4 goes into 40 10 times. Okay, I could have seen 8, right, but I didn't see it in time. Well, that's okay. We'll just go another step. What about 2 goes in here 3 times, it goes into 10 5 times, and now I don't have anything left in common, and I can multiply everything in my L to get my LCM. 4 times 2 times 3 times 5 is 120. That's the LCM for those two numbers. You can also do an LCM for three numbers. When you do that, you need to make sure that you start off by dividing what they have in common for all three numbers first. So is there a number that goes into 18 and 24 and 45? Well, three goes into all of those. So I always want to start with a number that goes into all three. It goes into 18 six times, it goes into 24 eight times, and it goes into 45 15 times. So any, remember, this number down here times this should equal the number that's above it, right? Because we're dividing. So then we can go, okay, is there anything in any two of these numbers? Well, I can see that 2 goes into 6 and 8, but 2 doesn't go into 15. So I'm just bringing 15 down. It's not part of the division, but I can do this now. It goes here 3, and it goes here 4. Is there anything that goes into any of these two numbers? And then I could say, well, it doesn't go into 4, but 3 does go into the other two. It goes into itself once, and it goes into 15 five times. And now, is there anything in common with any two of those numbers? And the answer is no. So my LCM is 3 times 2 times 3 times 1 times 4 times 5. All six of those things in the L get multiplied to give you your LCM. So what is that? 36 times 10, 360 is the LCM for those three numbers. And finally, one last one before we go. That is, what is the LCM for these three numbers? Well, I can see right away that 2 goes into all of these. 6, 15, and 16. Of course, you can use your calculator to do those divisions. You don't have to do them in your head. Is there anything that goes into any of these two numbers? Well, 6 and 15 can be divided by 3, 2, and 5. And then is there anything that goes into any of these two numbers? Well, yes, 2 goes into itself once. It goes into 16 eight times. And then my LCM is everything in the L. And that is 2 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 times 8. And that is 24, 48, 480 when you multiply that out. So you may be asking, why would I ever want to do LCM? And the answer is, when we, why are we learning this? When you add and subtract fractions, you have to find a common denominator. And when two numbers that we are considering are in the denominator, we say that we're finding the least common denominator. You've heard that before, right? LCD. But in fact, we're just finding the least common multiple of the two numbers. So when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you can use this method to find that common denominator. And also, I have a video showing you how to do this on the calculator if you have a TI-36X Pro. So tune into that one if you want to see how to find the LCM on a calculator. Have a fantastic day.